And we're back with password again, or at least I hope we are because OBS did an update recently and ever since it's been really difficult. So this is actually take two on this entire video since I recorded everything yesterday or I tried to record, I did everything and it didn't record. So here's hoping. Anyway, this is going to be a slightly different uh, video today. Uh, a lot of the uh, day seven here is the same. We just have different scenes for different routes. So we've run through Dean's as a whole, well, apart from the bad endings, of course. And what I'm going to do is just play the uh, more specific Roswell bits today and uh, see how that goes. So we will load up. And we're going to start at the right of the day seven which is slightly different to uh, where things were with Dean. <clears throat> Good morning! The sudden voice called me to jump, expecting to have a moment alone before breakfast. Did I startle you? I rubbed my eyes, struggling once more to find a place to stare at while I spoke to this embodied voice. I wasn't expecting you to say hello so soon. What happened to talking tonight? Ah yes, I wanted to relay one last thing while I had the chance. I was going to bed, but you seemed uh, preoccupied. I buried my face in my hands, hiding my apparent embarrassment from someone who apparently couldn't even see me to begin with. What did you want, Oz? I have informed Benson we have spoken. You should find him an ally of sorts, but he still has things he needs to do for me. Also... He trailed off, leaving me with silence for a moment. Just as I was about to check if he was still there, he spoke once more. Remember, be cautious. There's every chance that one of your friends is the one behind it all, riding the coattails of this vacation towards something malicious. I thought you said I shouldn't doubt my friends. And I believe that to be the correct mentality. Merely be careful. Fine, fine, careful. As for tonight, meet me in the library at 11pm. Wait, we're going to be talking in person? I believe this is the best way to do it. You seem to dislike chatting over the radio. Benson also believed that if there's to be some level of mutual trust, I would need to talk to you in the flesh. I'm aware I said I don't wish to give myself away, but my want of seeing no one die outweighs staying hidden, at least for just one person, Abby and you. Additionally, there are certain things best left for in person. Remember, library, 11pm. But there's nothing but silence to follow. It seemed that for the time being, Oz was done talking. With the conversation over for now, I got myself ready and headed downstairs for breakfast. And breakfast and the uh, most of the day continues as before. Uh, there's going to be a slight difference in the greenhouse scene, but we'll do that on Ty's route. So we can just, by the magic of editing, jump. Well, apart from this section, of course. Now, oh, Roswell. He called himself small and weak. Thinking back, it checked out. He's always the one to follow some that was stronger or take comfort in the security group of people brings. He smiled at me sweetly from the other side of the table, my cheeks going red under my fur, thinking back to last night. I looked down at my coffee, smiling to myself. I don't think I was all that much stronger than he was, but I felt stronger with him around. But it was possible. He was smart enough to probably pull something off or somehow organise it to overcome the lack of his strength, maybe? After all, it didn't take all that much strength to shoot so he had a gun, so it was that. Well, I did know that Roswell was typically easily upset when it came to, well, anything about death. I don't think he'd be able to hold it together if he killed someone without giving himself away. And we've talked about these guys before. After the pumpkin carving, those that weren't helping Orlando finish portion up to the pumpkin were to go to, went to go to get clean, myself included. Making sure I had my scrubbing brush, I got to work, trying to get the orange out of my fur. I must have scrubbed myself all over twice, for enough the smell was gone, the stains were no longer noticeable. Oh boy, that feels a bit... better. As I stepped out of the shower, still clad in only a towel around my waist, I almost ran to Roswell, pacing about my room. Roswell? Without a word, Roswell came in and hugged me around my middle and sighing out contentedly. This is nice. Um, yeah, but did you have to hug me now? Well, I'm sorry, I was just feeling a little lonely. I felt my cheeks go red looking down at Roswell. Was this where we'd normally kiss? I wasn't sure if I should just go for it, but Roswell pulled away for I had the chance to act. 
I don't think I'm quite at the stage where I want to see you naked, Dave. I like the closest to hugging you like this brings. As in, without my shirt. Or well, is that bad? Isn't that what boyfriends are meant to do? Uh, oh, well. Oh, don't get me wrong. I know we're not, at least, not yet. Unless... I laughed, nervous, making sure I kept one hand on the towel for modesty. Oh, um, I... I don't know. <laughs> I'm only messing with you, Dave. We're a long ways off anything like that. All I know is I like being near you, that's all. I smiled at Roswell, watching as he wandered toward the door to my room. Well, that's fine, but maybe wait until I'm dressed next time? Oh, I'm sorry, I just thought... I mean, at least let me be in underwear next time. All right, well, I'll let you get dressed to meet you downstairs. Roswell gave one last wave before leaving my room, closing the door behind him. Once I was adequately dressed in fresh clothes, I wandered back downstairs lazily. Maybe I'd just grown tired after an eventful day so far. I'm back. And we return to this slightly awkward scene. And once again, we're going to skip over it. Slightly later on. I didn't realise family was that important to everyone at the table. Obviously there were various things I didn't know about their personal lives as it never really came up, but now seemed to be the time to ask. So let's ask Roswell. I'm still flattered he saw me as an older brother, Roswell. Really? You never knew? I guess I never really thought about it. I assumed that was the case. I can't exactly style my hair in the same way. But you always seem, I don't know, better at guiding us. Wait, me guided? I'm just the guy that holds the flashlight. Or someone else normally has the map. Well, if I hadn't seen you literally playing with one, I'd have thought you were just making a metaphor. Would you believe at one point Dave was afraid of the dark? Hey, I wasn't afraid of it. I just didn't like it. Well, who does? Hey, don't knock it until you've tried it. You can get a lot of stuff done in the dark. Ah. <laughs> I never thought to ask Roswell, what do your parents do? Oh, has this never come up before? Well, Dad is a criminal law attorney and Mom is a, a neuroscientist specialising in psychology, I think. Oh, they must earn the big bucks. Oh, well, I suppose so. I didn't really think about it much. Criminal law? Huh? How scary. For the rest of the afternoon we just idly chatted, comparing life stories until it was time for dinner to be sorted. And we know what happens there. And then this is a bit different. Dave has just re revealed, accidentally of course, that he opened the vault. The words are out of my mouth before I realise it. Reflexively I clamped my muzzle shut with both hands, looking down the table. He opened the vault? I felt my ears droop as I nodded slowly, keeping my eyes trained on the crumb that I'd noticed had fallen off my plate. Again? What do you mean again? So you opened it before? Anything good inside? Can we maybe not skip the past that he somehow opened it in the first place? Well, it wasn't so much open as I messed with it and saw, well... The first time it was me, dead, in the museum. Really? Yeah. Well, that's fucked. This time, uh, it was Benson. Another stretch of silence soon followed and I placated myself eating some fried chicken. But even then I saw the attention of everyone at the table. So now what? We're going to do anything about Benson? Why? You don't believe him? To be honest, if I uh, didn't know better, I probably would still be a little sceptical. Oh, it's just a little, I don't know, hard to take in, right? Well, I believe him because I got the thing to work too. Fuck off, what did you see then? Uh, Dave, dead. So I, I believe him, if only because I don't want, to, uh, want what I saw to become the truth. I'm not going to risk something like that. Oh, not worth it. No shit, I'd be in the same boat if I saw that. Well, if something had happened, why didn't you tell anyone sooner, like right after you saw it? Hey, it, it, it was hard to process. Things come back on track from before. And so we uh, pick things up here again. So, of course, we've had uh, dinner, Dave's... Been to the vault, put the password in, seen Benson's death, and everything has followed on as before in Dean's route. But things are a bit different now, so we're going to go back to it. 
I was guided upstairs into Hoss's room. With Roswell's being a mess and supposedly the same thing with Orlando's, it was the only one suitable for all four of us. When we got there, Roswell left to go grab a deck of cards from his room and returned just as we were spreading out blankets and pillows. Ah, oh, this is nice, just like when we stayed up all night that one weekend, right? I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I'll be staying up all night tonight. Oh, me neither. I had enough excitement for one day, I think. But we can still play cards for a bit, right? As long as you don't cheat. Oh, I never cheat. I'm just very lucky. Roswell shuffled the deck and dealt us each five cards. A poker? Oh, no, no, I was just thinking we could play a casual game of go fish until we're tired enough to turn in. That sounds fun. That's why we just ask who has the cards, right? That's right, sets of four, uh, speaking of. Dave, got any sevens? Almost immediately I looked over my cards and handed two of them over, drawing two more from the deck. You know, I've been wondering about what you saw in the vault. I wonder what it all means. If it's true, then why Benson, right? Oh, and Dave, I'll take those threes you have. Oh, um, okay. I handed Orlando three cards and drew three more. Honestly, it's um, something that's bothering me a bit. You guys must think I'm crazy. Well, I don't think that. It's a little hard to believe, sure, but why do you lie about that? Oh, normally I can tell when you're lying too. So far you've been in the clear, if a little odd about it. Could have just convinced yourself that it's true, but still. Also, it's your turn. Oh, uh, can I have Kings? Orlando? Asking me to find you a King, Dave? I sadly can't help you this time. Go fish. No wonder. Is it showing the future? The past? I'm sorry I didn't bring it up with everyone right away. Well, you can start by making out to me by handing over those kings you apparently have, Dave. Oh, okay. You didn't really have a chance to, Dave. Let's say that instead you saw Sal dead. You'd be worried, right? But, uh... Hoss, maybe back off a little. I look between them, confused. I, I think I know where Orlando's going with this, but still, if you'd seen Sal die or even one of us, no one did. That's what's got me troubled about accepting this as fact. How does it work? Why does it work that way? But there's something else. Now, what's that? Well, the door, it's not actually open, is it? When you, well, whatever happened to you, Dave, the door itself never opened, right? I don't think so. Well, damn, I was hoping we'd have some insight into what was behind it. Money, the meaning of life, something, you know? Uh, for its worth, I wouldn't mind if it's money. Seems like it's a lot to offer a bunch of strangers, though. We're, what, two medals down so far? Finding the rest seems doable unless it's in complete set and we're on a wild goose chase. I'm sort of hoping it's something more symbolic. Like what? Like a thing to bring people back to life? Well, that'd be nice, at least. The dead stay dead, Dave. It's better that way. Well, even the vault, if how you described it is accurate, only so convinced death, not brings people back. Oh, you're right. I'd made myself sad thinking about it, but I shrugged it off looking to Hoss. So, uh, Hoss, it's your turn, right? Oh, wait a second, Dave, listen to me. I turned slowly from Hoss to Orlando, unsure what he's getting at. Just remember, what's happened, happened. You can't undo it. I know that, but... Dave, you can't bring back the dead. I'm sorry. I nodded slowly, looking at the spot on the floor in front of me. Oh, I knew that. I'd thought about it long and hard. Part of me even consulted on this with Roswell for a full day before I realised what I was really asking about and why. The rest of the game was played in relative silence. About halfway through I realised I'd been holding my cards wrong and the others could see what I had. But by that point I didn't care all that much, instead focusing on what was to come later. That meeting with Oz was still on the table, and it seemed I wanted things answered, he'd be the one to talk to. Hey guys? What's up? Is it cool if I go say goodnight to the others? I mean, I guess, but why? Oh, well, mostly just wanted to make sure they weren't fighting, right? Because Tyson and all. Almost immediately, Orlando and Roswell looked to one another before turning to Horst, who was staring at me. I was lying, of course. I wanted to go say goodnight, but I was leaving for another reason. It just came down to if Horst would call me out on it. Well, all right. Just don't be gone too long. I sighed out, flashed him a quick smile before heading to the door. Don't worry, I'll be right back. I wasn't going to be right back. I had somewhere I wanted to be, somewhere else. The museum was dark, quiet. That special brand of quiet that made me jump at even the smallest of noises. 11pm was minutes away. Also was going to show, right? 
I could ask him any question I wanted, any question at all, and that might be enough to save all of my friends. I just have to make the end of the month, right? End of the month and then it's all over. All my friends survive. It's not the most ideal, but if that's the price, so be it. If I had to shoulder the burden of sadness for the sake of my friends, I was okay with it. Hopefully after the month was up, I could maybe have a different vacation to make up for lost time, if there was a chance at something before everyone moved away. Which just made me sad thinking about it. I up on the floor of the museum, looking around and letting my mind wander. I wonder how many of them will keep in touch. There was every likelihood that I'd be the only one left, even those that I'd soon would be around forever looking at going away. I sat and waited. The room was still quiet and cold. Where was Dean? Where was Orlando? I shivered as I checked my phone. 11.30. He's late. I headed to my room, annoyed. I needed to check something. Oz! I didn't bother hiding my tone. This was it, the moment I'd find out if this was some cruel prank played on me by one of my friends or not. Oz, are you there? Silence. At least the first few moments, for sure enough I heard the radio switch on. I am here. You sound annoyed. Is everything okay? You're right, I'm annoyed. Where were you? I did what you said. There it was, though. Unless someone else had left their room and it was easy enough to confirm, Oz was indeed a ninth person within the house. I was in the library. No, you weren't, I. You were in the museum. Wait, what? I designated the library as the meeting location. You opted to go to the museum. It's the same room. Isn't it? Regrettably, it is not. The library even has multiple entrances. Well, where is it? I can come right now, honest. There was silence for a few moments. I was about to storm off, assuming the answer was a no. I have an offer. I froze, looking back into the room with my hand on the door handle. One last shot. I have a theory I need to test. You saved Benson for me. I did not realise that he was a potential target either, and for that I'm grateful. Truly so. So again, tomorrow night, same time in the library. How do you know about that? Do you have multiple rooms booked? I have some surveillance. We were escapades through the house earlier looking for the gun were loud enough that I could hear. Do you watch the vault? I do. What of Orlando? What of Mr Noble? About him using the vault, have you talked to him too? As far as I know, no such anomaly has happened. If he can, this is news to me. But at the same time, I cannot watch the cameras all day, every day. I watch when I can. I have other responsibilities, a job that is required of me. If you're still interested, ask me about it tomorrow. Wait, but where's the library? I waited for the response, but it never came. The room fall into silence. With a sigh, I was forced to concede the point, but it's good to know that I hadn't missed my chance. The only thing I wanted right now was to cuddle up with... him? I felt myself go red, chuckling to myself. Was this the feeling of being properly smitten? That at the end of the day, the only thing I wanted to, to wanted was to cuddle up with... well... Part of me felt bad that despite Dean's advances, he wasn't the one I was thinking of. He's the one I was supposed to be dating, right? That's what Orlando had been telling me, that he was a good match. Now, I wasn't so sure. Was it bad of me to look forward to getting some sneaky cuddles in? That I could try and play the worried card in hopes of further selfishness on my part? Tired, I wandered back to the others I meant to stay the night with. They were as I left them, although looking peaceful, quietly sleeping. It brought a relieved smile to my face, knowing it was another night done. Roswell was cuddling a pillow, a dopey grin on his face as he slept. I wonder if he was dreaming of something happy, and admittedly I was a little jealous. Laying down next to him, I mirrored him, cuddling into my own pillow and watching him sleep as I got comfortable. I was out like a light soon after, and made it through another day. I also knew what my job for tomorrow was going to be. By this stage, my body needed rest. I needed to find the library, somehow, and wonder if there's anyone around I could ask. Either way, it was a job for the morning. There we go. That's the end of that. How, how did you guys find that? Because as a storyteller, I'm really not happy skipping over sections, even though I know it's been told, you've heard it. But I'm not sure everyone wants to sit through the same thing almost three times. So let me know in the comments. We have a Tyson's route still to do. And at the moment, I'm planning on doing his similar way. So there's some slight differences in the greenhouse, like I said. But uh, hmm, we'll see 
how that goes. But yeah, let me know. We might uh, do it that way, or we might do it uh, a different way. In which case, I'll just do the whole thing again. And uh, if you want to watch the whole thing, you can always check out Dirk the Red Panda's stream. He played uh, a whole section live with all the bad endings, about four hours. Check out his channel, definitely. And uh, you'll see everything there, even if I do a highlights. So, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye for now.